Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 21047.com podcast. My name is Keith Cartwright, and I am the host of this show. I'm really glad to have you in listening today, wherever you are, whenever it is that you might be listening, because this really is. This is my one flame to burn. This is my attempt to run to dark with the light that I have found in this running journey that I'm on through the stories of some friends I've been blessed to meet along the way of this journey. Many of those friends I've had a chance to run with along the way, so a lot of a lot of good along the way of this journey that I'm just hoping in, in one way or another to share with all of you. One of those friends I want to give a special shout out to today is my dear friend Christy Allen. Christy was one of the original partners with me through my Patreon site. Um, Patreon's just an opportunity to, for listeners, fans, friends, family to partner financially with different creatives on projects that may be close to their heart as well. And for more information on Patreon, you can go to 21047.com, T-W-O-T-I-M 47.com. Click on the Support Me tab. But a special thanks today to Christy. Christy was one of the original sponsors at the sponsorship level on Patreon for this podcast. And special shout out to to my friend today, Christy. Um, I think Christy has a birthday coming up this week. It may be one of those special milestone birthdays, a milestone where she'll be joining me in an exclusive sort of birthday birthday club. So an early happy birthday there, my sweet friend. So today's episode, going to crank up the miles a little bit, technically speaking, going to be interviewing my friend Solomon Whitfield. Mo, as many folks listening may, may, may know Mo, Mo recently ran 40 miles, and when he did, I knew that he would have to come on this show at some point because you're, you're starting to get up there into mileage that's way beyond my imagination, so when something gets beyond my imagination, I need to hear about it. I need to ask questions about it. My curiosity picks up. So I want to welcome uh, Solomon Whitfield Mo to the show today, and I'm going to turn this interview over to our conversation. All right. I want to welcome my good buddy Solomon Whitfield, better known to me and many others as Mo. So welcome to the show, Mo. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I actually feel kind of privileged. Uh, well, we're not done yet, so don't get too privileged. <laughs> Um, Spoke too soon. Yeah, Spoke too but soon. as as a sort of a introduction, Mo and I met online through the Meg's Miles Supporters Facebook group, and actually Mo is forever planted in one of my I won't say one of my favorite running memories, but one of my most <laughs> vivid, picturesque running memories back in 2015, the first time I ran the. Run the bluegrass. I have this picture. I'm sitting actually looking at it right now. It's me uh, crossing the finish line of that run the bluegrass. I'm not sure if I had one more step to take. Uh, another breath might have been optional at that point. But <laughs> my buddies, uh, Tracy Scott and then Mo were there to run me across the finish line. So that's, that's always, always going to have a special place in, in my heart. And then Mo actually ran across the finish line with me last year at my first marathon. So it's it's actually a privilege on my end to, to be talking to you here, buddy. Oh, I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. So running, I mean, that's that's certainly where our connection started. And I, I ask yeah. almost everybody who comes on here, because most of them are runners, mm-hmm. how did you get your start running and kind of how long have you been running? Um, well, truthfully, I've been running, albeit inconsistently, since high school. Um, I actually did sprints for about two, two and a half years in high school. Um, once I graduated and went to college, it became very sparse, other priorities. So I would run, you know, maybe a couple miles every now and then. But I, I could truthfully probably count on, you know, ten fingers how many times I actually ran in college. So then once college ended, pretty much the running ended. So with respect to this journey that, you know, everyone is is kind of familiar with, it was July 20th, 2011. And as most runners, they have a specific date and time in mind. Uh, So for me, it was July 20th, 2011, and um, it was a really hot day. You know, I've always been relatively in shape, but I hadn't been running in years. So um, I put on a pair of old 
running shoes that I had probably no business wearing, and I went out and barely could do a mile. That was essentially the uh, springboard to, you know, getting better, running more, and then obviously becoming more consistent within the sport. So I've been actually just just actually celebrated six consecutive consistent years of running. So that's that's pretty much that's that's where I say my official start came from. So I'm I'm, I'm interested. I was a high school sprinter myself, and so in being a sprinter, I always looked at those distance runners as like a different breed and sometimes a strange breed. I never wanted anything yep. <laughs> to do with them. So I'm curious if you, if you had any of those similar battles, because that, that really held me back from ever doing any distance running for a long time after high school. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, in high school, you know, the sprinters kind of hung out and the distance runners hung out in a different circle. We we kind of ran with different crowds. And, you know, obviously we had different workouts. And, you know, they would share some of their their mileage and their insane workouts. And I can tell you, I wanted zero part of it. The, the, the idea of running more than, you know, a mile, I, I had no interest in it whatsoever. And if you would have told me back then that I would be a distance runner now, I would have bet the farm that it would have never happened. Right. It's just, it was just not my thing. Like I, you know, back then I was, you know, I, I wanted to run, but I wanted it to be done. Right. No, so, I've always yeah. said I need to see the finish line. If I can't see the finish <laughs> line, I'm not running that far. Exactly right. Exactly right. I'm, I'm with you there. And sometimes even now I still have that mentality because the finish line seems like it's never going to come. Well, but. so let's, let's go there a little bit because – uh, so my most of my relationship with you has been what I used to think was crazy mileage. So, like I said, we mm-hmm. ran the half marathon together there, run the bluegrass back in 2015, and then yep. we've run some different things since then. And then back in November, like I said, I ran the Richmond Marathon, and you were there to run me in. And that was 26 miles. And to me, that was insane mileage but you recently went out and ran 40 miles in one day and one effort i am so i'm curious how so and now it's even a bigger transition you went from the sprinter who said i'm never you know i can't see myself ever running those insane miles those guys do to running that kind of mileage and now we're talking i'm talking to a guy who just ran 40 miles the thought process how did you mentally and sort of decide that I want to start running those kind of miles? Well, you know, I, I ran my first marathon, like a Fisher race marathon. I did the Shamrock in Virginia Beach. Uh, I believe it was 2012. And um, that was my first race. You know, I, I, you know, no 5Ks, no half marathons. It was, it was the full. That was my first. And, you know, after that race, I – like many others, vow that I would never do that distance ever again. Um, but you know, you know, once I recovered and, and kind of you know was able to replay all of the, the training that went into it, you know, I wanted more. But the, the thing about it is, and, and you know, with running, it, it's kind of funny because you you know you set goals and then you reach those goals. But my personality is, is always you know I want more, I want more, and in conjunction with that, you know, there's the appeal of the challenge, and there's also selfishly the appeal of, of doing things that not a lot of other people are willing or want to do. So, you know, it's, it's kind of my way of standing out and separating myself from everybody else. Not that I'm better than everybody else, but just wanting to do something different that not a lot of other people want to do. So that's kind of how I started to transition to, hey, you know what, maybe I can run a little bit more, you know, maybe I can do, you know, greater distances. And so that was, that was the, and that is the ongoing challenge with me each and every day is to continue to see how far I can go. So I want to set this next question up a little bit with uh, something Mm -hmm. I watched this weekend on TV and it actually got Mm -hmm. me, I knew I was going to be, uh, interviewing you at some point, 
And so you actually yeah. came to my mind and, uh, shortly after I'd watched this. So I was watching the British Open golf tournament this weekend, and mm -hmm. Jordan Spieth is in the lead. He looks pretty comfortable. And then all of a sudden, he hits this shot that I, I yeah, it was like six <laughs> fairways over. The camera's on him. He's climbing up on top of this mound that's just overcome with tall grass. The shot looks absolutely impossible. The announcers are talking. You can even hear the sort of air come out of the announcers' voices. They were feeling sorry for him. Nobody in their right mind would have thought he's coming out of that hole with any chance to win the tournament. And mm -hmm. what he proceeds to do is, one, on that hole, he ends up hitting a great shot. He doesn't, doesn't fall nearly as far out of the running as everybody thought he would. And then... From right. there, he puts together five straight holes of just brilliant golf and wins the tournament. And right. what I said afterwards to myself, I posted on Facebook, is mm -hmm. I was just awed by the mental strength he had. Everybody else in the world said he's dead. And in his mm -hmm. mind, somehow, he kept this mental strength to plow ahead and not only succeed, but succeed in a big way. So I say all that right. because so recently you put it out there. My goal is to run 40 miles. And you went out and tackled that once, and it didn't yep. work out. You didn't, you didn't finish it. And so I'm wondering, mm -hmm. because running brings in such a mental component, I'm wondering mm -hmm. how, because then the next time you went out, and that was your goal, you absolutely achieved it. So I'm wondering, from a right. mental standpoint, when you're in the midst of what some could say was a failure, what some could say was an impossible uh, task to go ahead and, and complete that sort of distance, mentally mm -hmm. talk to me about how that first setback affected you, and then how did you overcome it? Well, you know, I mean, when you set a goal and you feel like you have mentally – physically, spiritually prepared for it, you know, you don't go into it thinking that you're going to fail. You, you go into it thinking that, you know, you, you're going to accomplish this goal. And obviously the optimist in me thinks, well, you know, everything is going to go smoothly. Well, as you know, with any run on any given day, any set of circumstances could happen to derail your perfect plan that never gets executed how you initially thought it was going to go. Um, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and truthfully, you know, I don't make excuses for that day. You know, the goal was 40. I ended up with 27. And truthfully, I couldn't take another step that day. You know, I just I cramped up. Uh, I was getting dehydrated. Um, you know, I, I just I didn't have the energy and I, I came up short, you know. Um, but I progressed as a runner. Had this happened three, four years ago, I would have I would have beat myself up over it. I would have you know, call it a complete failure. I would have called myself a complete failure. And then the negative chatter would have creeped in as to, do I really want to keep doing this? Do, you know, is, is, can I, can I really achieve this goal? Is this really something that I truly can accomplish? The difference between three years ago and now is that I understand that running is a process and, you know, some days are going to go great and some days aren't. Um, but at the end of the day, it's how much effort did you display? Can you can you go to bed at night knowing that you gave it your complete 100% solid effort? And a lot of the posts that I that I've done recently all focus on effort. It's not about being the fastest. It's not about being the most fit. Um, it's not about winning races. It's about giving your best effort. And if you give your best effort, then you can live with the results. And that's why I didn't deem the first 40-mile attempt on June 24th as a failure because I knew that I had prepared for it, and I also knew that despite the circumstances as they were, I gave it my best shot. And from that standpoint, I also knew that, yes, I came up short, but I also had that intensity and desire to want to go back out there and try it again whether I succeeded or failed because I know – in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, that I'm giving it my best. You know, it's not about trying to impress other people. It's not about trying to, to show off. It's about setting a goal, 
uh, focusing on a challenge, doing the necessary things to prepare yourself to get there, and then live with the results, whether you succeed or come up short. I won't use the word failure. I'll, I'll say come up short because, um, you know, there will always be other opportunities if you're willing to put in the work and understand the process. And um, that's what I would tell anybody when it comes to running is to understand the process. So for me, it was a no-brainer. I wanted, you know, with my personality, I wanted to go back out there and, and, and prove to myself that um, I could do it. And, you know, nothing was going to stop me from – attempt after attempt after attempt to achieve the goal. I knew one day that I would get there. I didn't know it would, I didn't truthfully know it would be this soon, but I knew I would get there because I knew, you know, I had the desire and willingness to work towards it. For me, it's, it's more about progress as, as a runner, um, from a mentality standpoint of how much I've learned in the last three years and how I view failures shortcomings and, and what you do going forward. It's, it's more about the reaction as opposed to the action. And um, I chose to react in a positive way. And uh, thankfully, um, it worked out in my favor. Yeah, well, congratulations, buddy. That was yeah, that, that was beyond impressive to me. The, the mileage, you know, number one. I love the whole idea. Well, there's a couple of things I love about what you just said. This idea of running, you know, we often think of, if you think of a three-year uh, running career, most people would think about, have, has your time progressed, right? Have you progressed mm -hmm. physically as a runner? But right. going back to this mental component, I mean, there's a lot of mental growing that has to happen to become a, a good runner or to become the kind of runner you want to be because the reality is whether you're shooting for 40 miles or whether you're shooting for five miles, wherever that level mm -hmm. is, like you said mm -hmm. earlier, there's always going to be failure in that. And failure can either yeah. trip you up or trail failure can. Um, and I agree with you coming up short failure, however we want to call mm -hmm. it. There's always right. going to be that. And sure. sometimes on a daily basis. And so I think, you know, that, that, that mental component, to turn from those situations tripping you up and slowing you down in terms of your progress to turn that into something that lifts you on to the next step. That's a huge, a huge piece of this running journey. Absolutely. And, and, and something else that, you know, I want people to understand is that, you know, we put pressure on ourselves. You know, when you, when you put a goal out there on Facebook, you know, you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure you're 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 making yourself vulnerable and i and you know i know i have a, a significant presence on on facebook and um you know sometimes people just assume all right well you know most at this goal he's, he's gonna he's gonna do it um so it was interesting to to see the reactions that i received when i didn't do it and i think a lot of people wanted to see how i was going to react knowing that i did come up short it, people have to understand that, you know, we put the pressure on ourselves. It, it doesn't necessarily come from other people, but people will look at you and, and see how you react to, you know, certain situations. You know, are you going to, quote, unquote, run from it? Are you going to run towards it and, uh, and try to overcome it? Um, so that was a takeaway from that, that, that failed attempt is that, you know, you, people are looking at you as to how you're going to react. And um, if you react positively, hopefully that rubs off on them so that they un also understand that, you know, when they come up short, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Here's what I need to do differently. Let's keep a positive spin on it. Yeah. So. No, I think I, I loved how you responded. I'm, I loved that so many people were able to witness that response because the reality is when it comes to running, that's that's the reality of the running journey. It's the reality of life, really. That's no matter what you set your mind to do, whether it's in your career, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's in running, it is going to be filled with obstacles, filled with failure yeah. along the way. And that's so much of what this podcast is about, is that fighting the good fight, because it never goes away. No matter what you're doing, right. you're always right. in this fight to, you know, finish the race. And I believe you have to have some sort of faith. My faith is in, in God that allows you to maintain that strength to keep fighting. So I was glad, folks, really, um, I know from your standpoint, the day that you got 27 instead of 40, there, there was 
you know, clearly some level of disappointment there. But in terms of its impact on other people, I think it ended up being a, a really good thing for, for people to see in terms of your your reaction and then, you know, turn around and get back on the horse, as they say, and get out there and, and actually accomplish it the next time out. Exactly. So I'm, exactly. I'm curious because I, I am not a guy who has run 40 <laughs> miles. Um not yet. No, not yet. yeah, that, that, that's a big, a big <laughs> echo on the not yet. But, but I think about, you know, I, more and more lately, I have followed some folks who run these longer distances. You and I are both familiar with Harvey Lewis, and you know, Tracy has you know shared stories about some of those guys. But you know, I get out there on a five-mile run, the mental demons start messing with me, trying yeah. to tell me I can't finish this. And I just wonder what sort of mind games happen when you're out there for nine and 10 hours and covering 40 <laughs> miles. I mean, I mean it. There's some days when I'm like two miles into a five mile run, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I got another three miles to go. I can't imagine thinking, oh my goodness, I'm three miles in, I got another 37 <laughs> to go. So I, I'd love to hear you talk about a little bit. Are there any different sort of mental challenges that happen in a distance that far well unfortunately the longer you run the longer you think which oftentimes creates you know more doubt um that's that's the hardest part is you know when you're for me when i'm out there running these longer distances because i have you know i'm a thinker i have a tendency to think that's part of why i run is because that's it's like it's my time kind of to get away from it all to just think about a various array of different topics. For me, you know, a, a good run for me is when I'm actually not thinking about running. That That's a good run because I'm, I'm so focused on other things that the last thing I'm actually thinking about is what I'm actually doing out there. Um, so there'll be times, you know, that it, I take the 40-mile run, for instance. There'll be times where I'll zone out for hours on something other than running. And that helps me because, you know, when you're, you know, like you said, when you're out there and you've hit mile three and you're like, oh, geez, I got 37 more miles to go. Then, then you know, you allow the doubt to, to creep in. So over the years, I've trained my mind to focus on other things other than running. And the stronger that I get in that particular skill, the better off I am with regard to my distance running. Um, you know, everybody has, has things that, that work for them, but um, I try to focus on, you know, other aspects of my life, positive or negative, um, and, and just kind of get away from the idea of, okay, I'm out here running. Yeah, and um, that, that's, that's helped me. So, you know, with respect to the 40-miler, you know, it took me 11 and a half hours. And, I mean, you know, obviously I wasn't, you know, doing it for speed. I was doing it for distance. But, you know, the longer I got out there, like I said, it was hard to to focus because I had never really been out there for that long period of time. So it, I would be lying if I said that, you know, I didn't start to focus on the doubt or the heat or, gosh, I'm tired or why am I doing this? You know, all of those things came into play. Thankfully, over the years, I, I've trained myself to kind of get away from that and to separate myself from the doubt. It's, and, and, and truthfully, I can't do it all the time. Um but I've, I've gotten pretty good at it, and, um, you know, I I stay true to the reasons why I run, and as long as I stay true to those reasons, I, I find that I have a tremendous amount of success. But it, it's, it's a fine line between focusing on other aspects of my life versus running, and that, 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 that's, that's kind of the, the game that I play when I'm out there, and that's kind of how I gauge – if it's going to truly be a successful run or not, is my ability to focus my mind elsewhere. Yeah, well, that I'm absolutely awed by it. Um, like I said, it took me seven hours to run the uh, marathon I ran. And to be honest with you, mm -hmm. a lot of my focus was on when am I going to get to eat dinner. Um, <laughs> you're out there, I mean, you are. When you're out there that long, you're, you're starting to skip meals, absolutely. you know, and and I think you know me well enough to know I'm a big fan of meals. So like 11 hours yeah, out there, I'm yeah. starting to miss a couple of them. So, yeah. you know, one of the – and I, I'm with you. You know, when I get out there, I try to do the same thing, focus on other areas of my life. 
One of those areas I find myself thinking an awful lot about is my role as a dad. I think about my kids, mm -hmm. some of the things they're doing, yeah. some of the things I you know, hope I'm doing in their lives. I'm curious from the dad angle of things, because you're, you're a dad of two young kids that are pretty close to the same age as my kids. How does running influence your role as a dad? Um, oh, that, that, that's a tough question to answer. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, when people ask me about running, the first thing that I tell them is that running saved my life. Um, I won't go as far as to say that I wouldn't physically be here on this planet but I will say that I wouldn't be the person that I am today without running. Um, you know, I, I'll divulge a little bit of information. I suffer from depression. Not a lot of people know that, um, but I do. And, you know, as you know, it's, it's not something that's easily treatable, whether it's medication, um, counseling, or what have you. Um, it, it varies from person to person. But what I will say is that running has helped stabilize my mood and is an, a, in a positive way. So when you make that connection to being a father, it, it's allowed me to be more patient. It's given me more energy to interact with my kids. Um, not to mention, it allows my kids to see their dad be passionate about something and to also understand that, you know, my dad's running. He's not the fastest. He's not winning races. But that guy, he's he's given all he's got, and, and he's making an effort. And you know, maybe I can become passionate about something. And you know, I don't necessarily have to be the best. But if I love what I'm doing and I'm passionate about it and I'm working my tail off, that's all that I can ask for. So you know, from from a mental standpoint, it helps me to just focus on my kids more and I and I can be more patient and I can be more engaging and and like I said also my mood is much more stable and so they see me as a much more stable figure I'm not to not to say that you know we don't have our our ups and downs right. with respect to our kids you you go through it I go through it any yeah. parent goes through it but uh, I have learned to instead of having those super highs and those super lows to kind of keep more of an even, even level playing field when it comes to raising my kids. And I, I attribute that 100% to running because I liken running to parenting in the fact that it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Oh, you got that right. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a daily grind. Each and every day you're going to have bumps along the way. You're going to have those days where you think you can run forever. You can have those days where you think your kids can do no wrong. And then, you know, you have the days where the bottom falls out. I think for me, it's just, it's helped me to better deal with situations um, than I would have had I not uh, become, you know, a runner. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely played a part in my parenting style. Um, you know, it's allowed me to be more consistent. You know, as I have become more consistent as a runner, I've become more consistent as a parent. And Full disclosure, I have lived a very inconsistent life. It, it is extremely, it, it has been extremely difficult for me to be consistent with anything, personal relationships, careers, what have you. Once I started to really focus on running, like that became my passion, that became my focus, and I started to see the consistency in that particular aspect. It started to um, have a, a have a domino effect on other aspects of my life, and now I, I'm 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 more consistent in other avenues, and truthfully, I I definitely attribute it to running. Wow, I appreciate you sharing that, Mo. Um, it, I'm sitting here thinking, as you're talking about that, I think it's been the last three or four folks in a row that I have interviewed on this podcast who have talked about running as a either help them deal with something like depression or overcome trauma in their life most recently i interviewed kel kelly and she just built a outdoor gym for the refugees in a refugee camp overseas but even she talked mm -hmm. about the reason she built the gym was it was so critical for the refugees to have that exercise that outlet to help them build 
emotional strength. So it's amazing to me the number of people who run as a form to make them stronger in other areas of their life. I'm Absolutely. proud of you, man, for the progress you've made and your willingness to share that with us because I think I think there's a lot of people out there who can can relate to that. You know, my work life deals a lot with mental health promotion and one of the, the biggest struggles, which you know, is just this stigma around depression. You know, not enough people feel sure. free to talk about it, and then, therefore, they don't get the help, and we don't, as a society, offer enough help. So I, I'm just grateful it, you it, shared that. Oh, no worries. It's, it's you know, the, part of the reason that I wanted to do the podcast with you is, is you know, you have people, people have their perceptions. When you're on social media, people are going to have their own assumptions of what that man or what that woman is like. You know, I, I don't know what the perceptions are of me. I'm sure some are positive, some are negative, but, you know, we're all real people. We all have real lives and, and real issues and real demons that we face, and I just want people to know that I'm no different. You know, I try to promote the positive, the upbeat, the inspirational things, on Facebook because I don't I don't like to focus on the negative, but I also want people to know that, you know, I'm no different than them. You know, I, I deal with a lot of ups and downs in my life on a daily basis as well. And, um, you know, if you can find an outlet, it doesn't have to be running, but if you can find something positive that you can be passionate about that you can kind of, you know, uh, focus on, um, it, it, it goes a long way in, in helping you to, to deal with a lot of, you know, the struggles that we all face in our everyday lives. So speaking of social media, um, you recently posted something on social media that in line with this conversation, I'm, I'm infinitely more curious about now than I was when I first mm -hmm. read it. So you posted this quote. It said, set a goal so big you can't achieve it until you grow into the person who can. Now, given that you've mm -hmm. just run 40 miles, <laughs> I am curious if Mo has a goal that is out there and is so big that's going to take you some time to to grow into the person who's going to achieve it. I do. Um, now, you know, I'm a process oriented guy, so I, I you know, I, I set one goal, you know, I get to that level, and then you know, I set the next goal. Um, my next big time goal is to do a 50 miler. And what I want to do is do it in such a way where I finish at Meg's Memorial um, in Ashland. Um, I've, I've had this idea in my mind for, gosh, probably two years. And, you know, I've always, in, in the past two years, you know, I, I get really, really excited about it. And then, you know, life happens or, you know, I, I you know, start to get a little burnt out from running, so I scale it back. And, you know, this is the first time this year that I've really, like, dialed in and, and stayed focused on my goals. You know, that, that that's the next one in line. Is, um, and hopefully that will probably take place sometime late fall, early winter. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's to do 50 miles, whether it's, you know, starting from the memorial and going 25 out and, and, and coming 25 back. But uh, for me, it's important to end at the memorial um, because it's, it's just synonymous with everything that the group is about, everything that I'm about, you know, the struggles, the ups and downs, the, uh, the support that we all receive, the strength that we, you know, garner from Meg's memory, um, from, you know, her family, from all of us that are part of this group, um, it's just it's, it's kind of a, a metaphor, so to speak, of of what we are a part of and what we all deal with in our daily lives. So uh, that's that's the next immediate goal. Um, but ultimately, I would like to run for 24 hours, right? whether that's a 24-hour race, uh, whether it's a hundred hundred mile race, um, something along those lines. But that's that's like the big goal. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I'm slowly but surely working my way up. I've got certain distances in mind that I want to get to. Um, 34 originally was my longest run ever, and it took me a while to kind of get to that point. And then obviously, once I did 34, I had 40 in mind, finally got there. So now, 
now the the time, effort, training, tears, swear words, whatever you want, <laughs> it's all going to be uh, uh, to focus on that 50 miler. But I haven't set a, a official uh, date and time for that one yet. Oh man, I'm going to be, I'm going, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to be pushing you, rooting for you, but pushing yeah, you. you. <laughs> um, well, you don't want to run with me. You maybe sure? that last yeah. mile, you know, maybe the last mile. <laughs> I am fascinated. I, I told somebody this recently. The the whole idea of a 24-hour run. Now, this isn't me saying I'm mm-hmm. signing up or I'm committing to one. But there is something right. uniquely challenging about that because it's not just at that point taking in the miles. It's this right. whole sleep deprivation, right? You got to not only you got to keep your legs yep. active, but you have to stay awake. I don't know if they make enough <laughs> coffee to keep me awake 24 hours, but... Well, you do like a challenge. No, I do, so I'll be interested to see um, where you go where you go with that. But So my final question is that somebody listening right now, and you know, either they're toying with the idea of running or they're mm-hmm. where you were, and I most of the time am, you know, tackling shorter runs... Just anybody looking to either get into running or pick up their running journey, any advice that you would have mm-hmm. for them? Um, absolutely. I mean, the thing about it is what you have to understand and what I would tell anyone is that you have to run for you, first and foremost, uh, above any, anything else, regardless of the distance, regardless of your goals, run for you. Because as you know, and as a lot of people listening no, as, as a lot of people who run know, it's very easy to compare yourself to other people. I do it even to this day. Um, you know, you, you see someone who does this ridiculous distance or this incredible pace or, you know, wins this race, and you're like, gosh, what am I doing wrong? Um, so my initial advice is to, to always do it for yourself and to not compare yourself yourself to other people and to and you know stay true to your convictions um you know if you want to run for speed run for speed if you want to run for distance run for distance in my case when i first started running back in 2011 and i realized that you know this is something that i want to do long term i made a promise to myself that i was never going to run for speed and what a lot of people don't understand is the reason that i don't run for speed is because I don't want to put the pressure on myself to have to try to get faster, try to get faster, because I feel in my mind that I'll get burnt out. And the last thing I want to do is start to hate running, for it to start to become a chore, you know, just to distance myself from it, because it's brought me so much joy and it's helped me so much in my personal life. The last thing I want to do is to start to resent it. So, I've always been a distance guy. I, I've always been one to uh, to challenge myself from a distance standpoint. So that's what I would tell people. You know, decide on what your goals are, but stay true to them. Whether it's a month in, a year in, you know, just never forget the reasons why you started running, and do not compare yourself to others um, because that's that's a that's a battle you're never ever going to win and ultimately it's going to lead to you becoming discouraged and um you know then then truthfully you may feel like a failure and i would never want that for anyone you know running running is one of these unique sports that you can have all the support in the world you can have all the facebook comments you can have all the likes all the text messages all the phone calls telling you how great you are how wonderful you're going to do but at the end of the day who has to run the miles? You do. Nobody can run those miles for you. Um, so th- that's that's part of my appeal. Um, so that's you know. So that's what I would tell people. You know, just don't put the pressure on yourself. There's enough pressure out there that we all have to deal with. Adding additional pressure on ourselves is only going to make matters worse. So um, you know, it's enjoy it. Understand the struggles. Understand the ups and downs. And as I said earlier in this podcast, it's not about the action, it's about the reaction. And if um, you can understand that and, and be willing to work and progress and, and, and put in the work, um, you're going to have success regardless of what level you are, regardless of what goals that you may have. Um, but it starts with you 
but it also ends with you. That that that's that's the best advice that I can give anyone who's toying around with it. Ironically enough, my friend Lynn uh, shared a post that I had done three years ago about essentially what a runner looks like, and I had a picture of a mirror because um, I was out doing a run, and you know I saw people running all shapes and sizes, and it's true. It doesn't matter. What you look like doesn't matter how big or small you are. Look in a mirror, and that's what a runner looks like. And um, as long as you keep that in mind, as long as you have that sort of confidence and understanding in yourself, you'll be successful. So that that's my advice. Ah, that's good. That's great advice. I've actually lately been focusing a little bit more on running uh, with a pace that keeps me in a certain heart rate zone and the aerobic zone, mm-hmm. which has required me to run slower than I used to run Mm -hmm. and that I'm used to Mm -hmm. running and I'm not fast by any means but by comparison I'm running slower than I was used to and when I first started this and this came as I just read a lot of articles that said this is really the healthiest way to train to run long distances and so when I you know when you're running keeping yourself your heart rate at a in 140 beats per minute instead of up there 100 Mm -hmm. mid 150s where I was and you're running slower. Right. You know, at first it was just miserable. I was just beating myself up yeah. the whole time. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. But what I have found lately, number one, my you know pace in that zone has picked up. But I, mm-hmm. I'm i enjoying running maybe as much as I ever have. And, you know, yeah. I've, I've come to conclude, you know, I'm never winning an Olympic medal. I'm never even winning a race probably. Yeah. And so, really, what am I doing this for? If it's not for this, what do I get out of it? What is this enjoyment right. that comes to me? And so, it's sort of been right. uh, revolutionary for me following following this uh, sort of training, and it's definitely in line with what you've just said. So, I appreciate it. Oh no, no worries. Uh, like I said, anybody can do it. Um, you just have to believe that you can do it. And never let anybody tell you that you can't. Absolutely. Absolutely. Buddy, I am just so grateful for your time today. This has been enjoyable, fascinating. Uh, I knew it would be, (laughs) so I appreciate it. Well, there you go. You have now uh, talked to a 40-miler. I hope you all are uh, entertaining plans now of increasing your distance from whatever it is to um, that big 40-mile goal or something that is reasonable to you. I love what Mo talked about. This is really all about you, your goals, running for yourself. So maybe, you know, today you're two miles and you're just waiting and looking and pointing to get to two and a half miles. And that's really what the journey is all about. I appreciate so much about what Mo talked about today in terms of the running process, the the running journey versus running accomplishments. Because in the end, accomplishments... As we look at them, they often do become these points of comparison. And more often than not, when we're looking at other accomplishments, they they tend to make us feel less worthy, um, less of a runner than we, we otherwise would if we would just focus on what our own running journey is, what are our own running goals. So hopefully Mo's conversation today has had you think a little bit about that. What does running mean to you? What are you in it for? Thank you, Mo. I want to tell you, just give you a little teaser, if you've enjoyed listening to the additional miles, so to speak, today, come back to the next episode. I've interviewed Harvey Lewis this week. Harvey is a big ultra ultra runner. He's run some uh, extremely challenging, some extremely long multi-day races. And my conversation with Harvey was fascinating, kind of just in line with Mo here. What makes the mind tick that takes you to this next level of running, this next distance. So come back next time and listen in to my conversation with Harvey Lewis. Until then, I hope you all have a great week. Get out there and run your miles. Cheer somebody else on who's running their miles. But just give it your all. Like Mo said, this is your journey. Make it a good one. Thanks for making me and this conversation part of that journey today. And I just hope you all have uh, have a good week. Have a good day. Can't stop